Right. And next topic has to do with the our incompetent president reaching out to the ally, a Gulf ally, Saudi Arabia and United Arab mm -hmm. Emirates, seeking help regarding the Houthis. Houthis is also another term. Uh, uh, it's the the Western terminology for it. The yeah. The real name for it is called Ansarullah, which means guardians of God. That's the Arabic word for it. Uh, except that in the Western, uh, 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 for us in the mm -hmm. West, we use the term Houthis. We don't use, but but if you go to the Middle East, you're gonna hear the term Ansarullah, not mm. the Houthis. Got it. Yeah. The reason why they use the Houthis is because in there, I, I think I still have. I don't know if I have a map here, whatever, but. Uh, uh, I have a map if you if you want it. Uh, it, it was it was one specific one okay. that I was looking for right here. But oh yeah, let me share it with you guys. Then you'll see share screen and Yemen map. So why I want to share this with you right here? Can you see it? Uh, yeah, there yeah, it is. So, yep. Uh, the reason I wanted to share this with you is to understand this area right here where I'm pointing out. I don't know if they can see the cursor. What is going on? No? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, they can see it. Yeah, see right it. here. This is Sa'da. Sa'da is in the north. I was in Sana'a. I mm. spent a lot of time. And, and this is where the Houthis are headquartered. And if you notice, this area here, Rub al Khali desert. This is a desert here. Mm -hmm. So here is what's fascinating. I've, I've been in that part of the world. Uh-huh. And I have pictures I'm going to share here if you guys want to see it. Yeah, please show them. Here's a picture. Oh, That's the kidding. same area. What it is, just a desert and yeah, rocks. Yeah. Uh, this is one it's here. Desert this as far is as the eye another can one see. here. I'll share it with you guys. And really, it's just yeah. a desert. And they yeah. call it Arrub al Khali, the empty quarter. That's the Arabic word that for it. That seems very reasonable. Yeah, <laughs> we were the only Peak ones there. there. And yeah. as a matter of fact, I had a flat tire. Uh huh. So, so how did you get around? We we'll just fix it. You with, fix it and you, you fix move the on. flats with what? With a with a spare tire. You oh, just yeah, have yeah, to drive yeah, slowly yeah, in yeah. that terrain. But usually you always carry a full tire with you. That's another mm -hmm. one. Someone said I was uh, uh, lost my mind. Yeah, and I, uh, said, uh, I say you only live once. Come yeah, on. David K says, once. I guess Dr. Wallalu isn't afraid of heights yeah. sitting like that on that ledge. Uh, he just, uh, <laughs> yeah, I agree. He I agree just with you, David enjoy K. Life. He was the last one here, but here is the best of them all is right here. Oh. Uh, <laughs> how about this one? Oh my God! Look at you. Yeah. And this is last one was when we went on a uh, right in the, in the sand here. That's that so that awesome. actually looks like. So I just wanted to picture. share this with you. But my point, guys, just to highlight to you in in this map here is this region here, Sada. Mm -hmm. So now this is where the Houthis are. Let me stop this. Uh, uh, this is where the Houthis are, and of course with the attacks they've been because uh, they targeted three yeah. commercials yeah. and. Uh, and I've seen the videos and I confirmed those. As a matter of fact, I do mm -hmm. have an image of one of the ships right here. Okay. Yeah, yeah they took yeah. over that one. Yeah, They That's took huge. over that one. And if you see the picture of the ships that are taking them over, yeah. they're yeah. much smaller. Now, there are some conversation about having a Somali pirates there. It's yeah. beside the point. Mm -hmm. The fact that... That's not new. Those yeah, are not but new. not that. It's not about that. It's about the fact that the U.S. couldn't retaliate. Yeah. That tells you something right there. And you know what it means? Yeah. That means we don't know the capabilities they might have, yeah. which means the missiles that they could, because here is the, here's the reality of what I need you to understand. The reason why the Houthis are forward about this, mm -hmm. about attacking uh, Israel and so forth, they don't yeah. care. Yeah. Because yes, there is an iron dome in Israel. Yeah. Yes, it will provide missiles. Yeah. If yeah. the 50 missiles is gone, all it's going to take is one missile. Yeah one missile to go through and if when when that missile lands in one of the settlements guess where what the problem is is that the settlements are not equipped to handle yeah. something like that so what you're going to be end up seeing everybody fleeing you already have about almost yeah. almost 400,000 people left israel yeah already settlements is going to become which means what you have to put this within the big picture of the thinking of what the prime minister of Israel was thinking about. Yeah. The expansion of settlements now is going in reverse. Yeah. This is why the Israelis were pushing the Gazans to go south. 
Mm -hmm. because the Saudis going to go to Egypt. That ain't going to happen. So the U.S. now finding itself concerned about what do we do? Yeah. And that's why what they wanted to do is they wanted to drag Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates into conflict against yeah. Houthis, yeah. which will not happen. You know why? Because Saudi Arabia and Yemen and Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates couldn't defeat the Houthis a few years mm -hmm. ago. Remember, only four years ago, yeah, was fighting. We were the one providing intelligence to the Saudis. As a matter of fact, there, there's uh, you won't you won't be able to find the record for this because it wasn't mm -hmm. off 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 record altogether. Some planes in the Saudis will have to be flown by U.S. Mm, that's interesting. That's very it's just interesting. the way it is because we were providing that, and the moment the Houthis start launching missiles into oil refineries inside Saudi Arabia, yeah, the equation has changed. Yeah, this is what the U.S. is concerned about, and he wanted to get the Saudis and the Emirates to get involved. Yeah. Oh no. And that's crazy. I, I cannot imagine, I, I cannot imagine them really getting involved in that. I well, know that they seems want, ridiculous. Well, well really the Saudis wise. and the Emirates will be stupid of them to even I mean, entertain that, yeah. the idea. Why? Yeah. Because they will be marginalized in the Muslim world. Mm -hmm. This is why the Saudi foreign minister lashed out at the U S after the vote yeah. in the oh, UN Security yeah, Council, which yeah, we will absolutely. talk about. We'll talk about that next. They are not gonna do that. Mm -hmm. Saudis don't want to lose because if they got marginalized in the Muslim world, it's yeah. bad news. Especially now that you are seeing the Saudis have reestablished diplomatic ties with Iran. Mm -hmm. There is no more conflict between them in the right, Middle East. Right. The whole Middle East is shifting east. There is a good relationship between the Russians and the there Middle are, Eastern countries, yeah. between the Chinese and the Middle and Eastern, the Middle Eastern countries. countries. And yeah. you've seen where the shift is. So why will the Saudis or the Emirates for that matter, will agree oh, no. to what the right, US right. no. And and it's very interesting because even now the intelligence officials are saying, well, we we can't determine if the US warship was the target uh, or not, right? No. So they can't officially come out and say, well, it was the target because yeah. that would mean that there would have to be pretty, pretty direct no. action taken. And so they're just saying, well, I, we don't know. We don't know. And, and they can't on. because if they would have done it, they would have done it against Iran. Right. Because remember, it's not a secret. Right. Houthis are armed by Iran. Yeah, that's well Hezbollah known, is yeah. armed yeah. by Iran. Hamas is armed by Iran. Islamic Jihad is, is armed by Iran. It's not a secret. It's mm -hmm. been for those who know about the Middle East. It's not in secret about it. Where the big concern today mm -hmm. is that we do not know what the type of missiles those entities have yeah. now i we shared this with you before guys that there are over 150 000 missiles in in, in Hez, uh, hezbollah's possession mm -hmm. what type nobody knows and that's a lot that's a lot yeah that's a nobody knows number. Nobody. and those are not i checked the information those are not a rocket uh, rpgs what no mm -hmm. we're talking about missiles yeah and that led to the question of how did these missiles get there to begin with mm -hmm. 150 000. Yeah. This is why That's Israel couldn't go, and, and this is why Israel couldn't go to Lebanon. Yeah, and if you only know what's going on in 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 that part of southern Lebanon and the north of Israel, you know, mm -hmm. the Hezbollah is targeting, destroying certain units, Israeli yeah. units. We don't hear much about it. We're not it. hearing very much about and it. And we all. will talk about this during you know, Rumble on stuff Rumble, because that oh, one yeah, you yeah. can detail more stuff. But I've seen the images mm -hmm. and the images that I saw, not from here. Yeah. I saw the images through satellites. Yeah. You, you can you can hide that kind of stuff. Yeah. And those sources for that were were credible. Mm -hmm. You know, usually I won't say something if I am not certain yeah. of. But they are in fact, of course, the casualty amount still very this disparity very between just, yeah, very uh, different. the last research, the last uh, uh, statements came out of the uh, the Ministry of Health in 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 Gaza, suggest that the so far they are about seventeen thousand. Yeah, yeah, that's what I saw too. Yeah. Is about but here is the thing. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this to put a comparison to why the U.S. is asking the Saudis and the Emirates. Mm -hmm. Did you know during the war against the Houthis, 150,000 people died in Yemen? Jeez, yeah. That shows you yeah. the U.S. understands they won't, despite our military might. Right. The world now is sees we couldn't win in Afghanistan. Yeah. We couldn't win in Iraq. 
what makes us think right. we could have uh, sort of uh, uh, go ahead and engage the Houthis. Yeah. And second, because Houthis understand that the missiles they have yeah. are within reach, within reach rather to all Israel. Yeah. As I said, the Iron Dome might protect. But it takes only one to right. get through. Well, and and we watched what happened with the Iron Dome during we, this which second failed. attack, yes. which did fail. It failed. Same thing happened in the Saudis yeah. when the uh, Patriot missile systems they failed yeah. to counter uh, or to to take down the missiles that the Houthis launched because yeah. they attacked one of the oil refineries. So, yeah. so and mind you, this is what I'm saying. When the U.S. is saying, oh, we are in consultation. No, you're not in consultation. Mm -hmm. You are seeking help yeah. because you know you can't do it alone. Right. And that's, to me personally, it highlights literally how fragmented our foreign policy is. Yeah. We don't have any because now we are isolated. Absolutely. And I think, I think maybe that's the biggest point right now is what allies do the, does the U.S. really have in the Middle East other than Israel? So right now we have Israel, but but look at the deteriorating relationship between the Saudis and the United States. Yeah, I remember. I, I guess it was maybe a year ago or so uh -huh. where Biden, um, you know, Biden Went to to Saudi Arabia, yeah, to ask uh, for oil, for oil, and and they said no, they wouldn't answer his call, and they told him flat out no. That to me is a deteriorating relationship, whether they're willing to say that it is or not. If if, if you won't take the call of the president of the United States, that's a deteriorating relationship. And that tells you right there that the U.S. credibility no more. Let me say thank you here to oh. uh, uh, Manel saying thank you so much for your super sticker. First time I see this name here. Oh, yeah. So good to have you here in our community. We are very excited to have you here. So thank you so much. So the idea of the U.S. asking uh, mm -hmm. for this is because those countries now they're gonna be asking themselves yeah haven't we learned from what happened in iraq haven't we learned what happened in afghanistan yeah. what makes us think that uh, and second even if they don't ask themselves that question yeah the key that's gonna be is the idea of if they ever side with the us they will be marginalized in the entire muslim world yeah. it's already and i want i'm one of those that argue that already most of the arab countries are the wind just talks yeah there is no action. Yeah. When it comes down to talks and photo ops, they're great at that. Mm -hmm. But in action, you'll find out they couldn't move an inch. Well, in action, they seem to be looking out for whatever the best interest best interest is, at least of the people who are ruling, right? At least of the people. It's the survival who are of in the in charge. Uh, yeah, it's the survival of the regime. Yeah. That's what it's, it's always been about. Survival of the regime. That's a great. And way to that led that, yeah. to a question: Could the U.S. Uh, sort of have leverage over the survival of the either both monarchies maybe yes and no but at this stage especially when it comes down to the u.s saudi relations they moved in a different direction mm -hmm. altogether to me uh, the the signs i've been seeing them for a while that's why i wrote a book about saudi arabia yeah. because of that uh, i've seen the signs that this relationship is coming to an end yeah and usually when you have for the us because we only depended on one specific aspect mm -hmm. that maintained our dominance there and you know what it is can anybody tell me that's oh, question okay. for that's you great. yeah put here's question what helped the us maintain its dominance in the middle east mm -hmm. so if you can type in in the chat box i'd like to read your your feedback there and i'm not going to answer it now i'll answer it as we move forward here so so the idea becomes now uh, the thinking you got one country that is siding with Israel mm -hmm. in the Gulf states. Yeah. Does anybody know which country is that? I'm putting everybody <laughs> on the spot. Now I like to have their their uh, contributions to the conversations. You guys are smart enough now to know how things are, uh, yeah. uh, and and we you've been with us for a long time now. You know how. Uh, so all right, we got we got a bunch of right answers. Go go and check in here. Let me see. A Saudi product. Uh, okay. Saudi Scroll up a little bit. Which one? Yeah, Saudi. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> what what solidified uh, the U.S. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What led to the U.S. dominance? Yeah. Uh, Saudi uh, bargain Qatar, uh, two degree. Uh, petrodollar, two degree. Yeah. Uh, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, two degree. Yeah, uh, you're right, David K. But, but there is one particular issue that doesn't exist anymore. Mm. That issue doesn't exist anymore, which means it ended 
the U.S. influence in the Middle East. So, you know, military uh, to a degree. What was the question again? The question is, what was helping mm -hmm. the U.S. influence in the Middle East? There was one particular issue. That issue doesn't exist anymore. And with it comes the end of the U.S. influence in the Middle East. Iran. You, you guys got in. Oh, so oh, confused. he got it. He uh -huh. got it. He got it. You got it. Oh, not behind. Not, uh, nope, not that one either. Go up further. Uh, right there. Yeah, uh, there uh, it is. No, why no. Nice <laughs> do you want oh, me to because, do it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. You're absolutely correct. Oh, my God, I can't, I can't grab it. Yeah. Here it is. All right. Is it that? You're absolutely correct. Yep. China was able to broker that deal. And yep. why am I saying this? It's because you have to go all the way back from the establishment of the Saudi sovereignty in 1932, but also you have to go right after 1979, what happened in 1979 mm -hmm. in Iran. And from that point forward, we were able to manage that wedge between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Mm -hmm. And we came to realize if we maintain the level of tensions between the two, we'll maintain our dominance in the Middle East. Yep. Now that issue is not there anymore. It's gone. Yeah. Is gone. This is why you're seeing the uh, the war in Yemen ended, and this is why you're seeing Yemen uh, Houthis are taking forward step. You're seeing Hezbollah taking a forward step, but the U.S. or Israel couldn't attack them. They won't be able to, yeah, because they are concerned about what the reaction is going to be, what type of weapons, because we don't know till today. Yeah. We do not know what type of missiles mm -hmm. Iran has. And well, Iran has developed the hypersonic, by the mm -hmm. way, with the support of both China and, and Russia. Russia. Yeah. Well, and, you know, I think looking at it from a human behavior perspective, you know, I this is a very interesting uh, example of the fact that mm -hmm. the U.S. Is, con is concerned about its own dominance now, period. Because if if we did feel confident, if the United States did feel confident in this situation that that uh, that they would actually be backed up. They would say, well, here, here, are the, here's the, the, the attack on the USS Kearney. Yeah. And they didn't. So I think it's very important to pay attention to more or less the chess moves of this. Of course. So they're going and asking for help. And, and I suspect the, the CIA probably does know probably does know what the weapons capabilities are. And that almost is a worse admission of knowing what they are and not uh, being able to combat them, knowing that they can't either win or that oh, the cost yeah. of that would be too much. So that's almost a worse admission. To yeah. Make. But at the same time, Iran is no Iraq. Yeah, for, so sure, for sure. For sure. For sure. Thank you. Thank you so much for your super sticker. Thank you. It's been a supporter, uh, an avid supporter yeah. of both channels, by the way. Uh, somebody, somebody up here said that that means friend. In Chinese. I oh, thank you. Right? Thank you for sharing that. that. I didn't know. Um, yeah, I didn't see, know. See, now you know why I wanted to learn Chinese back then when yeah. the Pentagon called me. Uh, right. Um, it was my mistake. I don't blame anybody else. It was my mistake. I didn't persist on that. Yeah. So, anyway, let's move on to our next. Let me just conclude this one here. Mm -hmm. Just want you to understand the reason why we are in so called consultation with allies is not about consultation, is we are seeking their help because they, both so the Arabia and the United Arab Emirates had first experience with dealing with the Houthis. Mm -hmm. And Houthis, by the way, are fierce fighters. Mm -hmm. They are fierce fighters. So I don't think so they're gonna move forward with that. Remember, there's still agreements between the US and those countries as far as security. But in this in this issue here, it's gonna be different because they see the consequences will backfire.